This is the last section for the unit. We will have our test on this unit on Monday. So be prepared. Ask me questions, come to my office, whatever you need to do. So this last section, if I can go right over to about here, I guess. Seems like I'm way over on this side of the class today. We are going to, in section 5.5, we're going to solve radical equations, which probably you've seen a little bit of, but I think we're going to go into it a little more depth than we talked about it, if at all, in intermediate algebra. And then as we have with everything, uh, with rational equations, with quadratic equations, we're then going to do inequalities. So those are the two things that our discussion today is going to talk about. So again, any questions you have, anything at all, please let me know. What you see here is going to be exactly what you see on the test. So I want you to be well prepared. I want you to do amazing. Uh, so here we go. This is example one on the sheet that I gave you, or if you're watching the video, you can print out the sheet from Canvas. It's the PDF right below this. So we are going to solve this. The square root of 2x minus 5 equals 5. Square root of 2x minus 5 equals 5. Well, in general, this is kind of the simplest form of the radical equation. I've got a, I've got something square rooted equal to a number. And so what would you guess if I gave you, if I, if I gave you a guess and your grade was based on it, what would you guess I'm going to do to both sides of this to solve it? Yeah. Square root. I'm just going to undo the square root by squaring. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to notate that like this. I'm going to put some parentheses around this side. I'm going to square it. I'm going to put some parentheses around this side. I'm going to square it. I've squared the whole left side of the equation. I've squared the whole right side of the equation. So when I square the square root of 2x minus 5, what do you propose that I would get here? Yep, squaring a square root, they just kind of undo each other. It's like tying your shoes and untying your shoes. So I end up with 2x minus 5, and on the right side, 5 squared is 25. So far, so good? Question, comment, concern? All right, we'll get more interesting than this. I see that I've bored you already this morning. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to solve this. We've been solving linear equations since day one. This should not be too traumatic. I'm going to add five to both sides. We get 2x equals 30. I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I get x is 15. And one thing before I call that my solution set, this is the same thing we had to take into account when we dealt with rational equations, is that our, our square root has a limited domain. We've seen that since the beginning of chapter two, when we first graphed our square root function and our square root function looked like this and it started right at the origin. Okay, I know I missed the origin on this little sketch right here. Okay, so not everything is going to be in the domain, so you have to check. So the check is nice and quick and simple. You just take that result that you get and you pop it in for X. So I'm gonna take the 15, two times 15 is 30. 30 minus 5 is 25. Square root of 25 is 5. Everything works out just fine. I don't get a negative under the square root. So there's my solution, 15. All right, before I have you do yours, that's right next door. Does anyone have a question? Not understand a step, not understand why we had to check anything at all that I can do to help clear this up for you. All right, then with that said, uh, don't, it's never too late to ask a question. If you come across one, do exercise one right next door.
All right, once again, just going to square both sides of this. So I'll square this side right here and I'll square this side right here. On the left, hopefully after you squared that, you said, okay, I've got a square root, I'm squaring it, I'm left with x plus four. On the right, three squared is nine. Okay, that's the new step. That's the new bit of information. The rest of this is old school stuff. Does anyone have a question about what we, what we did right here? Subtract four. And I get x is five. I'm real quick going to check. Five plus four is nine. The square root of nine is three. That's exactly what I have over here. So that is my solution set. All right. Well, that is the, as I said, the simplest form of our equation. And if you notice down uh, on the, uh, not if you notice on the back, the inequalities that you're going to solve or we're going to do are based on uh, on those. So we can take advantage of that first step. Uh, but before we do that, let's go to example two. So example two has this. I've got the square root of 11 minus x, and minus x outside the square root is equal to 1. And I want to know what the solution to this equation is. So we have a slight issue, not a big deal. I've got a square root right here, and then I've got something outside the square root. So before I square, anytime before I square, I need to have the radical by itself, okay, as best as I can. Otherwise, it becomes a little more complicated. You could do it, okay, but it becomes a little more complicated, and I want to avoid the trouble. So what I'm going to do, this is my first recommendation. You might make a little note to yourself. Always isolate the radical when you're solving this. That's what made this first, the first example we each did kind of uh, what I said simple or easier than this one is the radical was already isolated. All we had to do was square both sides and we were done. So I'm going to first isolate the radical. I'm going to write this step down just so that it's in your notes. I'm going to add x to both sides of this. And so I have the square root of 11 minus x is equal to, and I like to put my terms in descending order. It's not a requirement. It's just my habit. Ms. Hilliard, thank you for drilling that into me. There you go, x plus 1. Now I'm ready. Now I can square both sides. The reason that that's better is when I square both sides now, this radical is going to go away. If I square both sides over here, we have to do a little foiling. You're still going to end up with a square root, so you really don't end, actually do yourself any good. So squaring both sides, just like we did before, here's the second thing I need you to be aware of when you do this. Again, I'm, I'm going through the common mistakes. I've taught this class dozens and dozens of times. I know what you're prone to do, so just trying to, I'm just trying to shine some light on these things. Over here, you can't square each individual part. And when I square both sides, I'm squaring this whole side here. So put some parentheses around it. I got to square it. Again, we didn't have that issue over here because I just had a number. We squared it. It was, it was pretty apparent, not too big of a deal. So now the left side of this, the square root, when I square it, just like you've told me before, I have 11 minus x, not too big of a deal. On the right, though, I got to remember I've got a binomial I'm squaring. Unfortunately, it would be super great if, if squaring worked like this. I could just square the x and square the 1, but unfortunately, I can't. That's a binomial, so if you need to, you come over here. Here's your scratch work. I've got x plus 1 times x plus 1, multiplying a binomial times itself. If you don't need to do this, then and you know what this is when you square. If you've done enough of them, that's super. So when I FOIL this, I get my first give me x squared. My outers give me 1x. My inners give me 1x, my lasts give me 1. And so I have x squared plus 2x plus 1. I'll give you a moment to catch up. I know I just did a lot of writing real quick right there. One. Anyone not see where any of these terms came from? Okay, that's foiling. That's introductory algebra. I'm assuming you've done this to death. Okay, so. I'm going to move on unless anybody has a question. All right, well, now I've got a quadratic equation. So I'm going to get everything on the same side, and then you have a choice. The quadratic formula will always work. If this happens to factor, which I think it does, then you can factor. Okay, it doesn't matter what you do. So I'm going to add the x over to this side. So I get x squared. When I add the x, I get plus 3x. 
I'm going to subtract the 11. So 1 minus 11 is negative 10. And that leaves me 0 here on the left. And just so everybody can see, because I know we got a table, we got a camera and everything, I'm just going to come over here to finish this problem up. Like I said, if you want to use the quadratic formula, the quadratic formula will never fail you when you do when you do one of these problems. I'm going to factor because I see right away that this does factor. So x squared is x and x. My two factors of negative 10 to add up to plus 3 are plus 5 and minus 2. And so that gives me two possibilities. If x plus 5 is 0, that means my first possibility is negative 5. If x minus 2 is equal to 0, that makes my second possibility 2. Before we write those down in the solution set and celebrate and go on to the next problem, we always have to check because our square roots have a, uh, a limited domain. So when I put the negative five back at the beginning, and really all I, uh, when I put the negative five back in the, in the beginning, let's see, where's my eraser? When I put negative five right here underneath the square root, I get 11 minus negative five. So that's 11 plus five or the square root is 16 minus negative five so minus a negative five is plus five equals one what's the square root of 16 four plus five is four plus five one no okay so unfortunately even though the i don't get a negative under the square root what has happened structurally is because i ended up squaring something it took this it took this pot a negative answer and made it positive so i end up adding things together so the negative five, unfortunately, I'm going to throw out. Always check both, because just like rational equations, one might work, both might work, none might work. It just depends on the problem. So when I put two in, 11 minus two is nine. So I have to square root nine minus two. And then I want, is that equal to one? Well, the square root of nine is three. Three minus two is one. Okay, good. Always happy when at least one of them works. It makes me feel like I actually accomplished something. And so there is my solution set. So that's a little bit harder of a problem. There's some extra steps there. Anybody got a question? Anything that's not apparent? I need to do a better job. I need to be a little more specific. Let me help you because you got a test Monday. I'm going to put a couple of these on the test. I want you to do amazing. Okay, so this is a negative five. So I have a minus sign here, but I'm also putting in a negative five. So we gotta be super careful. So under the radical, I have 11 minus negative five. This is the negative five I'm plugging in. That's the minus, then minus, and then the X is negative five again. So when I subtract a negative, that makes a positive. That's where I got the 16 under the radical earlier. And then minus the negative, that makes plus five. Okay, so that's where those signs came from. Great question. See how easy that was when you got a question? Any others? All right, then do the, do the problem right next door. Exercise two says the square root of four minus three X minus eight equals X. Very similar problem. You just get to run through the steps now.
time to get started. We're still working, keep working. What's step one? What do I have to do first? Move the abbot. Yes, don't be shy. We're all friends here. Friends together for 10 weeks now. All right, so here we go. We've got four minus three X, add the eight over X plus eight. Now I'm ready to square again. My first step has to be to isolate the radical so that when I square, I actually get rid of the radical. That is the goal of what I want. So on the left side now, I'm gonna square the square root of four minus three X. On the right side, I square the X plus eight. Don't forget to foil. I'm not gonna write the foiling down unless somebody gets something different and we need to write it down. So let me know. Okay, so I'm assuming you can foil, but if that's a struggle, I'm happy to I'm happy to go through it. So square root of four minus three x squared is four minus three x. On the right, when I square this x plus eight, you should get x squared plus sixteen x plus sixty four. That's what that looks like. Anybody get something different? Do we need to talk about this? All right, so I'm gonna again, like last time, just moving the problem up here so everybody can see. Once again, I end up with a quadratic. So since it's a quadratic, I got to get everything on the same side and either hopefully it'll factor because I don't want it to need decimals or we'll use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to add the three X to both sides. So when I add the three X, I've got a 19 X here. When I subtract four from both sides, I get plus a 60 there. So again, this is going to factor. Maybe you didn't see it and use the quadratic formula. That's totally okay. Okay, so x squared is x and x. The two factors of 60 that are going to add to 19 are 4 and 15. Quadratic formula will give you these same two answers, though, if you, if you use that. So there's no big deal either way. One way is not righter or wronger than the other. There's my two possibilities, negative 4, negative 15. Again, did anybody get something different that we need to talk about why the arithmetic's different or what's going on? All right, well, if you, if you messed up somewhere, remember, that's okay. We're learning these things right now. We got two more examples because this is the most common style of problem you're going to see here. And you'll see it. Uh, you'll see if you keep going, go to pre-calculus. You're going to see it again in pre-calculus. Okay. And, and just like going from intermediate algebra to here, there's going to be some things that it's understood that you already know how to do. And this will be one of those things. Okay. So just make sure if that's your next step. Uh, make sure you learn it. If this you're done with math, then learn it enough to get the grade on the test. Okay, and then you can burn all your notes. I used to do that in college too. Just had a big note burning party after the final exam. All right, so you don't need to know any of that about me. I'm not interested anyway. So let's check these answers, and then we'll go on to the next problem. So when I put the negative four in here, I'll write this down. I've got four negative three times the negative four is plus twelve minus eight. Is that equal to x, which is negative 4? Well, 4 plus 12 is 16. Is 16, or it's not. Is the square root of 16 minus 8 equal to negative 4? Is that a true statement? Yes. The square root of 16 is 4. Minus 8 is negative 4. So, so far, that's a good answer. Remember, check them all because both could work. There's nothing algebraically that says that that can't happen. So, I'm going to put the negative 15 in here. So, I've got... 4 minus minus 3 times minus 15 is plus 45. Minus 8 is equal to negative 15. 4 plus 45, that's 49. So the square root of 49, which is 7 and minus 8. What's 7 minus 8? I was rooting for both of them to work, but not this time. And so that means my solution set just has one element in it, and it's negative 4. Is everyone tracking along with the checking? You see why we threw one of those answers out and one of them we kept? Just, yes. Yes, there you can get the empty set as, as an answer. So just make sure you check whatever the possibilities are uh, so that, uh, you know, on the test, I'll give you partial credit. If you get to here and you don't check, I'm going to give you most of the points, but to get all the points, you got to check and throw the wrong one out or throw them both out or keep or whatever the situation is. Okay, great question. Any others? All right, then do the next one. I've already isolated the radical for you because I am that kind of great instructor. So you just got to square both sides to start.
I'm going to get started with the busy work here. So if you're almost done, keep, keep finishing. If you have no clue what's going on, that's a great opportunity to ask a question so that we can get you on the same page. So the, the radicals already isolated, that's good news. So I'm going to square both sides of this like we have a few other times. And so on the left side of this, when I square X minus five, if you write it down on your scratch work, X minus five times X minus five is going to give you X squared minus 10 X plus 25. On the right side, I square the five X minus one and I get five X minus one. Yet another quadratic. Okay, we're getting all the fun of solving quadratic equations. So I'm going to bring the 5x over by subtracting it. So we get negative 15x. I'm going to add the 1 over and we get 26. Again, I'm going to factor it. If you were using the quadratic formula, we will end up at the same place. The two factors of 26 to add the 15 are going to be 13 and 2. So I end up with these two solutions. So my two solutions then become 13 and two. And again, we'll check, we'll make sure. I'm just, if you'll allow me, I've already written these steps down, but I'm gonna erase the little blue parentheses so that we don't get confused when we're plugging back in. So we always plug back into the original thing. And so here we go. When I try 13 on the left, I have 13 minus five. On the right, I have five times 13, which is 65 minus one. That's terrible. Let's try that again. So that's the square root of 64. So 13 minus five, that turns out to be eight. The square root of 64 is eight. All right, we all rejoice. There's the first answer. And then the second one. Two, let's see how that works. So two, two minus five on this side is negative three. I've got a sneaking suspicion that's not gonna be good news. Five times two is 10 minus one, so that's the square root of nine. So two minus five is negative three. The square root of nine is three. Oh, so close, but not right. One side was positive, one's negative. So again, only one of the solutions works. There we go. We okay? Well, just to beat a dead horse as the expression goes, we're going to do one more, okay? Because I want, again, I'm going to put a couple of these on the test. I want you to have practiced. Practice makes perfect. So do exercise four. Last one on the front page of the sheet. If you have any questions, if you got something, raise your hand. I will come over. You just want me to watch you do the problem. I'm happy to.
right, so I'm going to get started on this. Again, like previous problems, I, before I can do anything, I got to isolate the radical, so I'm going to subtract four from both sides. So what we are going to actually work on here is the square root of x minus two is equal to x minus four. The square of both sides, if you get anything different than me, that's something we ought to talk about. So the left side of this, that works out nice and relaxing, x minus two. On the right, we get x squared minus eight x plus 16. That's just foiling, I'm just not writing it down. And then I'm gonna put everything over there. So when I subtract the x, I get negative nine of them. When I add the two, I get 18. Two factors of 18 that add up to negative nine. And if you use the quadratic formula, you will be staring at the same answers of six and three. Okay, there'll be no difference in results. Hard stuff, especially if this is the first time you've seen it and worked with this. So any questions, a good question. We're gonna finish this up, checking these answers, and then we're gonna go on. I got a couple more things to show you. Uh, what happens if we have something without a square root, a different root, uh, then inequalities, and then one final thing, the, the really the beast of a question, if we have time, if not, it's the bonus question on your test, and uh, there's a video on it. So if under the radical, 6 minus 2 is 4, so square root of 4 plus 4 is equal to 6, so square root of 4 is 2 plus 4 is 6, so all right, we're in the running, maybe we'll get both of them this time. So now the next answer is three. Three minus two is one. One plus four is not three, it's five. Oh, again, so close. Solution set has six in it. If you got nothing else, if you got no questions, all I have to say about that, which was extensive and captivating. I don't want to rush you through, but I also. Don't want to just stand here not saying anything, so we'll keep going. All right, so at the top of the next page, I'm sure that this is probably a question that I don't even need to ask, but I just got to make sure I do my, my due diligence here. For example, three. Now I have a problem and it has a cube root. I've got the cube root of x squared plus 3x, and then is equal to the cube root of 5. All right, fantastic. If I gave you 100 guesses, what would your first guess be that you're going to do to both sides of this? You didn't even need 100. You only needed one. Yes, you're going to cube both sides. Okay, whatever the root is, you're going to use that same power to undo the root. So this is a cube root. I'm going to cube both sides. So we'll cube this side. We'll cube this side. And this problem won't take us too much longer after that. Okay, so that's the only really new step here. So the cube root of this junk cubed is just going to leave the stuff under the radicals, so x squared plus 3x. On the other side, the cube root of 5 cubed is going to be 5. It's a quadratic. Fun never stops with the quadratic, so I'm going to get everything on the same side. Well, this one doesn't factor, okay? So I made myself a little more labor here. That wasn't past me, wasn't being very nice to present me. Okay, so my value of A of this is one, my value of B is three, my value of C is negative five. I'm just gonna plug and chug those numbers in the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula, hopefully you're chanting it to yourself right now, starts off with negative B. Well, if B is three, negative B is negative three. B squared is nine minus four times A, which is one times C, which is negative five all over two times a, and that's two times one or two. E -hop. The reason past me did this is just because the cube root has no limitation in domain. You can take the cube root of anything. If you remember our graph from long, long ago, the graph just looked like this. Okay, so negative infinity to infinity. So don't really need to check your answers. So we don't have to worry about getting crazy decimals or anything like that. Things are gonna work out just fine. All right, so last step, let's go to the finish line on this problem. So I have negative three plus or minus underneath the radical, negative five times one is negative five. Negative five times negative four is plus 20. So 20 plus nine is 
29, and that's just arithmetic. And there's my two solutions. I've got negative three plus the square root of 29 divided by two, negative three minus the square root of 29 divided by two. Those are, that's my solution set. I won't be lazy on you. I know you paid good money to be here. There you go, get my full effort today. There's my solution set. The big deal there, I'm hoping solving the quadratic equation is not a big deal. Okay, again, if you're going to free calculus and it is a big deal, let's talk. Okay, I'll get you some review stuff so that you can get, get up to speed on that. But the new deal here is unlocking that from the cube root. So if you would please, right next door is a cube root problem for you. It's even easier. I probably, I'm gonna switch those next semester. I want the easy one. Why don't you guys do the harder one? Uh, will we ever need to keep a binomial? Uh, not in this class. It's, I'm not saying at any point in the future, if you keep going in math, that's not going to happen to you. But in this class, that's not going to happen to you. All right, so once again, going to cube both sides. So on the left side, there's not a quadratic under there. So this is going to be x plus 9. So it's just a linear equation. So that's a gift. And then 2 cubed is 8. And when I subtract 9 from both sides, you get negative 1. Boom, done. I bet you're rooting for one of those on the test. Depends on if I enjoy my lunch. If I enjoy my lunch, we'll put one on there. If I don't, if I'm angry at my lunch, we'll put something on there. Okay, and now you're wondering if I'm serious, but you just don't trust the math teacher. I understand you're devious people. All right, example four of mine. This is an inequality. So we're going to get to review the set steps for solving an inequality. So I've got the square root of two X minus five, and I want to know when is that greater than five? Okay, beautiful. I can't wait for this next question. There's three steps to solving an inequality. We saw, we saw these three steps when we did with a quadratic inequality. We saw these steps when we did a rational inequality last week. We're going to see them in the future when we talk about uh, logarithmic inequalities. But that, that fun is, you don't even know what a logarithm is. So we're going to have so much fun in the next unit. But until we get there, now we're going to talk about radical inequalities. Does anyone remember the first step of solving any inequality? Solve the equation. Great memory. Solve the equation. Okay. Well, we already did this on the front, okay, because I want to take advantage of the effort we've already put in. The solution for this related equation is 15. Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite the solution set here to remind myself the solution set is 15. Okay. Does anyone remember the second step that we use to solve any inequality? What does the number line represent? You're 100 percent right. Uh, it revert, yeah, it represents the domain. Yes, we're going to draw a number line. Okay, so we're going to use a number line to represent the domain. Now, for quadratic inequalities, that wasn't a big deal because for a quadratic, for an x squared, negative infinity to infinity. And for a rational, that wasn't even really too big of a deal. We just had to put some vertical asymptotes on it. There was one or two values that we couldn't use. For a square root, though, it's a little bit bigger of a deal. 
Okay, so my number line is not going to any longer be negative infinity to infinity because the, the, the square root has a limited domain. So before I draw my number line, I'm going to figure out what the domain of this radical is. So I'm going to take the I'm going to take this uh, the 2x minus 5. And this was, by the way, this was part of the video for section 5.4. Sorry I couldn't be here Monday, but the video is just what you would have seen live, just two dimensional. I look thinner in the video. Okay, so if you if we have some time at the end of class, we'll go through a couple of problems, but this right here, finding the domain of a square root, this was part of that video. Okay, it's only a 40 minute video. So it's not it's not the longest thing that you'll you'll see. So in 2x minus 5, remember for our square roots, that has to be bigger than or equal to zero. That's reflected on that graph of the basic x, uh, the basic square root function that we saw way, way back, third week of class. So now I'm going to solve this. This is my domain. This is going to be my number line. So I'm going to add five to both sides. I'm going to divide by two on both sides. And I get that my x is, if my 2x minus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0 so that I'm not taking a square root of a negative, then my x has to be bigger than or equal to 5 halves. This is my number line right here. So let's draw the number line over here. Bigger than or equal to 5 halves means my number line is going to go forever in this direction to infinity. But it doesn't go back to negative infinity. It has a starting point. And that starting point, I'm going to use a bracket, is at 5 halves. Does anyone want to tell me why I use the bracket at this end of the number line? Close it off, but why why not a parenthesis instead of a bracket? Because of the equal sign. Okay, yes. So this is my number line. The graph does not, if we graph this, the graph does not exist down here. That's why we don't need the number line on going toward the negative infinity end. That's that's difficult stuff. Are you tracking with me on that? Do you have a question? Is that clear? Okay, so then like we did before with the quadratics, like we did before with the rationals, we're going to take this value 15, that's the point of equality, and I'm going to put the point of equality in here. There's my two intervals. My two intervals are greater than or equal to 5 halves to 15, and then 15 to infinity. Then that takes me to step three, which I didn't leave myself room here, so I'm going to write step three here. What's step three? Not necessarily random numbers, but yes, you're right. You pick numbers and plug them in. You test the intervals. Okay, we're going to test each interval. So we're going to test the interval that starts at 5 halves and goes to 15. We're going to test the interval from 15 to infinity. Uh, if you got your calculator, you're going to help me with some decimals, and, uh, and we'll go from there. So 5 halves, remember, is 2.5. So what's the number that you want to test between 2.5 and 15? 2? Three, three, or 10, sure, any of those. Okay, from 2.5 to 15, I'm going to use three because uh, I like small numbers. But if you want to use 10, 10 is great too. Okay, I have no secret reason. I wish I had a secret reason. I have no secret reason for picking three. So I'm going to plug three in up here. And so two times three is six minus five. And I want to know is the square root of six. Oh, let me erase this right here. Is the square root of six minus five, which is the square root of one, the square root of one, is that bigger than five or is the square root of one less than five? That whole interval is going to be less than. So if you did plug in 10, okay, two times 10 is 20, 20 minus five is 15. You take your calculator, square root of 15 is a little bit less than four. Okay, because square root of 16 is four, so square root of 15 is a little bit less than that. So that would be less than still. Okay, any number in here. Still with me? All right. Give me a number bigger than 15. 16. Sure, yes. Figure that's what you're going to say, but if you want to put 100 in or anything else, it doesn't matter. It's all going to be good. So put 16 in. And so let's see how this works. 2 times 16 is 32 minus 5. 
32 minus 5 is 27, I think. Square root of 27, well, if you pop that in your calculator, it's going to be 5 point something, because square root of 25 is 5, so 5 point something. So 5 point something is going to be bigger than 5, and you can verify that in your calculator. Square root of 27 is bigger than 5. Last thing to do is answer the question. So we've done all the hard work. Uh, we're going to answer this question. I'm also going to ask you to answer another question because I just want to make sure we're clear on everything. So I want to know when is this relationship? This is the relationship I asked you to solve. So which interval solves this relationship right here? The one on the left or the one on the right? The one on the right. So let's describe that interval. Okay. Where does that where does that interval on the right start? 15. Where does that end? Infinity. What am I going to put at the 15 side? Why am I putting a parenthesis? That is correct. Okay, there's no equal. Okay, remember, this is my point of equality. So if there's an equal, I include the point of equality. If there's not an equal, I don't include the point of equality. Okay, so parenthesis. And then always at infinity, we put a parenthesis. If you don't mind, I'm just going to erase step three here because we're going to solve another problem. Just want to make sure that any questions you might have can be answered or you can ask them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip the inequality sign here. And let's say we have the square root of 2x minus 5. And let's say I asked you when is it less than 5. All right. Well, is that answered by the interval on the left or the interval on the right? Okay, left. We've already done all the work. Where does the interval on the left start? Five halves. Where does the interval on the left end? Okay, now here's the interesting part and the reason I'm asking the question. Okay, so I'm going to wait. I want everybody to be caught up and, and, and ready because this will be on the test. I do not want you to miss this. What am I going to put at the five halves end? That's correct. Wonderful. Why am I going to put a bracket there? Because I'm not interested, I'm not interested in equality. So that's that in, if, if I'm learning this for the first time, it might seem to violate that. And the reason is, is because that's just where the domain stops. That has nothing to do with the point of equality. In fact, put, if you put five halves in, if you put 2.5 in, what's two times 2.5? Five. five. What's five minus five? What's the square root of zero? That's less than five, right? So we, we want to include that point no matter what, because it's, it's less than five. So I'm going to put a bracket here. And so if you're, if you're just learning that, I understand that seems a little confusing. Make a little note to yourself. That's because of the domain. That has nothing to do with the inequality sign. The domain started at five halves. That's why we put a bracket right there. That's why I encourage that. So we put a bracket here to reflect that. What am I going to put at the 15 side? Parenthesis, because again, I'm not interested in equality. 15 was the point of equality. And so I put a parenthesis on that side. And there's my interval. So I wanted to make sure I answered that question because that's difficult. That that's uh that's very conceptual right there, and hopefully we did a good job of that. So what I would like you to do is exercise six. Once again, exercise six is already based on the equation we solved on the front first uh, the the second problem we did. So you've already done the first step. So whatever we get on step two, it's going to be we're going to put the bracket around it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because because the domain of a square root can be is equal because uh, you can have the square root of zero. Okay, you can be equal to zero. Yes. As long as the square functions. Square root functions. Not a cube root. root function. When you watch the video, but let me mention. I'm going to put a pin in that. When we're done with this problem, I'll, I'll circle around and I'll answer that question. I don't want to. I don't want to cross over two things at once. So let's do this problem, and then if I forget. Wave your hand because I am my short term memory. I'm going to be 50 years old soon. I have no short term memory anymore. I don't know where it went.
All right, I'm going to get started on this. If there's any question, if there's anything that's unclear, again, there's going to be one or two of these on the test. Okay, I want you to do amazing on this test. I want great grades. I want everybody to leave here at the end of the semester super happy that they had the purchase for college algebra. Okay, so on the front page, we saw that five was the, the point of equality. Great. Second thing, we need to use a number line to represent the domain. The square root has a limited domain. So I'm going to take that stuff underneath the radical, the x plus 4. And in order for the, for the square root to make sense as far as our Cartesian plane and graphing and all that, it has to be greater than or equal to 0. By the way, I don't know how far you're going in your math lives. There is something called complex algebra, where you do algebra on the com complex number system. It's a lot of fun. You'll have a great time doing it. Then in that class, the square root doesn't have a limited domain. You can do you could do anything because you're considering complex numbers at that point. So anyway, the, the world awaits you. So I'm going to uh, subtract four from both sides, and so I've got x is greater than or equal to negative four. So this is what my domain looks like. Okay, my domain now starts at negative four, and I'm putting a bracket there because we can have negative four under there. That gives me a square root of zero, and then it's bigger than, so it goes in this direction to infinity. My point of equality is five. So right there, and now I'm ready to test the intervals. So let's test these intervals and see how this looks. What's a number between negative four and five? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yes. Oh, I love it. Mathematician after my own heart. I love to plug zero in, but zero times anything is zero. So I put zero in, I get the square root of zero plus four. Square root of four is two, two is less than three. Everybody agree with that conclusion? Did I do that right? I make mistakes, so you should always be checking. And then a number that's in this interval right here, five. Well, I am going to do something sneaky. I'm going to pick 12. That's a weird pick, Kirk, sir. Why are you picking 12? Well, because I noticed just at glancing this, because this is not a super, uh, super difficult binomial, that 12 plus 4 makes 16. I can take the square root of that without my calculator. That's the only reason I picked it. If you wouldn't have seen that, that's fine. You get the same conclusion if you pick six or seven or eight or whatever you pick. Okay, so I put 12 plus four is 16. Square root of 16 is four. Four is bigger than three. Again, does everyone agree with that conclusion? Did anybody get a different conclusion that we should talk about? Okay, so the problem I asked you to solve was when is the square root of x plus four less than or equal to three? So again, is that the left interval or the right interval? The left one, the left interval goes from negative four and it goes to five. So here's my questions for you. What am I going to put on the left side of that interval? Why am I putting a bracket? What's the reason for the bracket on the left? Because that's the domain. Okay, I just want to make sure you're thinking this through. That's the domain. What am I going to put on the five? Yes, that's what I thought you said. Yes, a bracket because there's equal. Okay, yep. That one is because of the equal. So make note to yourself. Okay, that if you're still if you're still fuzzy on that, make note to yourself that the left side of that is be, bracket is because of the domain, the right side bracket is because that is the point of equality. So before we get to the last two problems on that page, the question was asked, hey Perkster, what would what would happen if we were doing a cube root? Great question. Uh, we're not going to go all the way through the problem, but I'll set up the problem. Let's pretend. Maybe I should do this in future semesters. Maybe you're making me a better instructor. Let's pretend that exercise five, the cube root of x plus nine, uh, uh, where it's equal to two. Let's say I want to know when is that greater than two. Okay, well, what did we get for the solution to that? I don't know. Is it negative one? I already got this. 
So then the second question, use a number line to represent the domain. So when you go back and watch that video for section 5.4, if you haven't, okay, it's 40 minutes of your time. There's going to be nice, it's probably the easiest section in the, in the whole college algebra book. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to see that, oh, when the index is three, if you think back to the basic function, the cube root function, the cube root function looked like this. How far left does the cube root function go? How far right does it go? So there's no limit on the domain to the cube root function. It's all real numbers. So if you were doing a cube root inequality for this step right here, use a number line to represent the domain, you would do negative infinity to infinity. And then you put the point of equality, negative one, and then you just got two intervals to check. You got negative infinity to negative one, then you got negative one to infinity to check. And then you, I'll leave that arithmetic to you. So these steps that I'm giving you, they, they apply to any inequality. That's why, that's why I'm going back to them every time. When you go to pre-calculus and you talk, when you go to trigonometry, you talk about trigonometric, that's a fun word to say. Trigonometric inequalities, you can still use these steps. Okay, so uh, you, know, you can thank me then when you get to that class. All right, so the last problem. We probably have time for my one example. Uh, so I, I have a video of exercise seven. Um, and if you don't want to watch it, that's fine. I'll just be upfront and honest with you. Uh, there's going to be a problem on the test, but it's going to be the bonus problem. So if you want some bonus points, great. Watch the video, follow along. If you don't care about the bonus points, then you can zone out right now, fall asleep. Just don't hurt your forehead when you're banging on the desk. Okay, so here we go. Here's my example that I'm going to do. This is a problem. The thing about this problem that makes it a big deal is that you can see it has two square roots. And I've been saying all along with our square root problems that our first step is we want to isolate the radical. We want to get the radical by itself. Well, that's now impossible because I've got two. Okay, so what we're going to have to do, and this first step, this is the labor in this problem is the first step. Okay, what we're going to have to do first is we're just going to have to isolate one of the radicals and deal with the consequences. So what I'm going to do, just because it doesn't have a negative in front of it, I'm going to isolate this radical right here. And then we'll, we'll go through the square root. And the good news is one of the radicals will go away. The bad news is the other one will still be there. So I'm going to add my first step is I'm going to add, hello, I'm going to add this to both sides. So I've got the square root of 3x plus 4 is equal to 2 plus the square root of 2x minus 4. So far, so good. Have I done anything contentious yet? Okay, this is this is where the labor is. I don't necessarily think this is hard conceptually to understand. I just think that this takes a little effort to do. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to square both sides. Well, on the left, that's not a big deal. But on the right, remember I said, we've got to square this whole thing. We can't, unfortunately, just square the parts. So I have to square that whole thing right there. So the left part of this, the square root of 3x minus 4 squared is the square root of 3x plus 4 squared is 3x plus 4 equals. Now what I'm going to do, because the, again, this is the labor. Once we're done with this part, the problem becomes just like what we already have done. So I'm going to come up here. I've got 2 plus the square root of 2x minus 4 squared. So that's 2 plus the square root of 2x minus 4 times 2 plus the square root of 2x minus 4. I've got to foil this, unfortunately. I'll give you a minute to catch up. I know I just, these markers are slippery. I can write really fast. Again, all the hard work for this problem is right here. After this, it's just going to be a, a problem like we've already done. So here goes, I'm going to do my first, so my first two times two is four. My outers, I've got two times the square root of two X minus four. So that is two times the square root of two X minus four. Everybody see that? Remember when you're multiplying radicals, you multiply the stuff outside the radical by other stuff outside. You multiply the stuff under by other stuff under. You don't cross over the radical. My inners, the square root of two X minus four times two is another two times the square root of two X minus four. I 
And what do we call it when we do the square root of two X minus four times the square root of two X minus four? When I have the same thing times itself, that's what? The square root of two X minus four. Got the same thing times itself. So it's squared. Yes, it's gross, I get it. It's not really pretty to look at. What this is, is this will occur, a problem like this will occur in certain situations in pre-calculus. That's why I even bother to mention it, okay? So that you'll at least have seen it when you get there. Uh, so now I'm gonna simplify this. I've got four, two of these plus two more of these is four times the square root of two X minus four. And then the square root of 2x minus 4 squared is 2x minus 4. One more thing. I've got 4 minus 4. That's fun. That makes life a little more pleasant. So what I've got is four times the square root of 2x minus four and then plus 2x. So goal achieved, I isolated one of the radicals, I squared both sides, I got rid of one of the radicals. So that's good news, bless you. But the bad news, it's not terrible news, but the bad news is I still have another radical to deal with. So now we just go through the whole process again, I'm going to isolate that radical and I'm going to square both sides uh, once again, and then we'll be just about done with the problem. So what that looks like, has everyone written this down? Can I erase this? Yes, we get that out of my sight for external. I want to see that again. All right, so let me just bring the 2x over to this side. So when I do that, I have x plus 4 is equal to 4 and then square root of 2x minus 4. I'm going to leave the 4 in front of the radical. You can, you can divide both sides by 4 and have a fraction over here if you like fractions. It's going to work out the same either way. And so now I'm going to square both sides. So on the left side of this, we did this earlier. This is just foiling. Now this looks like fun foiling compared to what we just did. So that's x squared plus 8x plus 16. On the right side, when I square the 4, 4 squared is 16. And then the square root of 2x minus 4 squared is 2x minus 4. I'm going to just do one more. Well, let's go with it. We've made it this far. So I'm going to distribute. This is a quadratic. I just want to show you, we're going to check, we're going to do all the same things we did. 16 times 2x is 32x. 16 times negative 4 is negative 64. Subtract the 32, that is negative 24x. I believe if I'm doing my subtracting right, I'm going to add the 64 and that gives me 80. Quadratic formula is going to work, but I see that there are indeed two factors of 80 that add up to 24. So I'm going to take advantage of that arithmetic. And the two factors of 80 that add up to 24 are negative 20 and negative 4. And just like before, we're on the downslope of this. We've done all the hard part. Now the rest is busy work. Uh, the, my first solution is 20. My second solution is 4. And all that remains now is to check those two answers to see if one or both or none of them work. And then that will be done with this problem. And then we'll be done for the day. So when I take 20, 3 times 20 is 60. 60 plus 4, that's the square root of 64, minus 2 times 20 is 40. 40 minus 4 is 36, square root of 36. So the square root of 64 is 8, square root of 36 is 6. 8 minus 6 is 2. Okay, love it. At least I got the satisfaction of one of the one of the solutions working. When I put 4 in, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 4 is 16. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. Oh yeah, finally. Both of them work. Woohoo! So my solution set this time has two numbers and it has four and it has 20. All 
right, so we don't have time for you to go through your problem. So when I post the video for this, there'll be a separate video. So you don't have to watch all class today unless you just love to watch the perkster do his stuff. Okay, there'll be a shorter video that just includes that last problem that you can watch and go through. So what I would encourage you to do is sometime while this is still fresh, give that last problem on the sheet a, a go. Try it and then watch the video and see how you did. Okay, we have a test Monday over these sections in chapter five. If you need